So I have with me now Mr. Sharif Al Ulama, Under Secretary of the Ministry of Energy and Infrastructure. Welcome to this interview. Let's start by uh, ADIPEC this year. There's huge attendance. What's new on the table? Uh, Maryam, honestly, uh, it's, uh, it's a, a pleasure to see us going back to normal. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, last year we had ADIPIC, uh, but you could tell that the impact of uh, COVID was still hovering around. People were still wearing masks, people were still uh, having some sort of safety distance, but today you see business as usual. Uh, ADIPIC is back. Uh, I hear we have almost 150,000 attendees, uh, 350 sessions, 1,200 uh, speakers. 40 plus ministers, so it's a pleasure and uh, a beautiful sight for sore eyes to see us getting back into business. Let's talk a little bit about technology and how is it evolving nowadays and what is the ministry doing to help UAE achieve its goals? Um, as, uh, as was mentioned in today's uh, ministerial session and uh, the opening remarks by His Excellency Dr. Sultan, and uh, His Royal Highness uh, Prince Abdul Aziz. Um, one of the biggest challenges that we see is uh, the development of technology. Uh, we know today that we are facing two major challenges. One is energy security, and the other is the climate impact. Uh, how do you balance between both? For me, the solution is in uh, advancing technology. Uh, let's talk about some examples. Uh, if we talk about uh, how do we reduce emissions while still uh, maintaining the uh, global need for additional sources of energy. We talk about hydrogen. Hydrogen today, when you compare it to your normal uh, fuel, is uh, anywhere between three to five times more expensive. How can you bring that cost down? Technology. Uh, electrolyzers are very limited in numbers. We need to expand, we need to create the demand, and we need to scale up that technology so that to reduce the cost of hydrogen. This is just a simple example. And this is what really uh, ADIPIC brings to the table. You have everybody over here. You have the policy makers, you have the big uh, companies, you have the technology providers, you have the thinkers. You get them all into one place, and I'm really hopeful that at the outcome of this ADIPIC, there will be a lot of solutions, there will be a lot of partnerships that are going to be formed, and there will be some solutions that are going to be coming our way. How can we look at the equation of security, sustainability, affordability, and this is the big title of ADIPIC this year. Is it difficult? How, how can we look at it? It's, uh, it's very interesting. Um, I'll just give you my perspective of the subject. When I came, first came to the ministry three years ago, and I was uh, having discussions with my counterparts in other countries, there were certain countries that would not even talk about anything but, let's say, green hydrogen. So, i.e., just looking at the sustainability side. These same countries today are burning coal. So it just shows you that, you know, you have these three uh, main pillars that you cannot do away with one energy security, energy affordability, and energy sustainability. Affordability is a major topic. It's like uh, the big elephant in the room that, that nobody wants to talk about. Uh, I gave you the example of hydrogen. If you go and you implement hydrogen across the board and somebody has to pick up the bill, who is it going to be? Is it the end user, the normal people that actually pay the bills, the electricity bills, or is it governments that subsidize? Neither one is a sustainable solution. So that's where what we talked about is technology plays a big role. Technology has to kick in. We need to support it with the proper regulations, legislations, and policies. And that's how we can win, all of us. When the ministry wants to set targets or put strategies in place, what are the main challenges you guys look at nowadays? Did it change from previous years? Definitely. We launched our energy strategy back in 2017. Uh, very simply, back then, uh, if my memory serves me correct, uh, your typical solar uh, kilowatt hour was around 5.6 dollar cents. Today, in Abu Dhabi, Al Dhafra project, 1.35 dollar cents. So it has developed. So uh, renewable energy has developed significantly. Now it is in abundance and it is cheap. So this is one major change. The other change, of course, uh, as you are aware, the Hassan project we have in Dubai, there was a, a strategic decision that was taken to go from coal to natural gas. 
uh, there are new players. Uh, we have uh, the uh, waste to energy plant in Sharjah, uh, Bia and Maslar. 30 megawatts of power from waste. Three new projects that are underway right now, two in Abu Dhabi and the biggest waste to energy project in Dubai, all coming on board. Plus, on top of that, we have our nuclear plant, Baraka, and put into the mix of all of that, hydrogen. Seven projects that are currently underway in uh, the UAE. So the energy mix is there. We are working on all fronts. We are trying to support all uh, stakeholders over here. Uh, the challenge is there. Is, uh, a, you, you can only do so much as a country. There has to be a global effort because uh, you can meet your targets, but if you meet your targets and all the remaining of the world doesn't, then we don't do much. So there has to be a global joint effort in terms of what we are driving at.